All right, hey everybody, today we are checking out simplebase.co. This seems kind of like the everything software. I did go ahead and pick it up on AppSumo, which it is available still. So if you're interested in checking that out, head over there. There will be links down in the description. So let's go ahead and scroll down here, see what it has. Basically, it's going to be a help desk. So think of like Zendesk. You're going to have an AI chat bot, which is pretty neat. That's kind of all the rage. Those are all over the place, so they're easy to get these days. So not a huge deal. You do have a knowledge base. Now, I don't know exactly what this entails yet, but it does seem like you can write articles for the knowledge base. Not sure how that's going to work, but we'll check it out. And then you have a chat box. I'm assuming this is where you customize your chat bot and looks like you can customize the look of it as well. It does look pretty clean from what I can see here. And here's the ticketing system. It looks pretty nice. I'm not going to be able to test this out really because I don't have a business where a lot of customers send in tickets. Create your chat bot in seconds using our no-code platform. Okay, so there's no code involved. That's good. Knowledge base, tired of boring knowledge bases. So are we. Say goodbye to time-consuming article writing. Okay, so it's going to do the article writing for you, I'm assuming through AI. So knowledge base templates. So we'll have to try and check that out. And then serves over 30 languages. So you'll have it's their support system. Does do analytics. I've seen that. And you get unlimited team members. So that's always nice. And it looks like they sell only the AppSumo deal right now. So they don't have normal pricing, looks like. So they're running this, this launch deal. So get on during the launch if this is something that interests you. So let's go check it out. We'll check out the AppSumo deal at the end. I don't think that needs to be the highlight of the video. So when you log in, this is what you'll see. You do have to activate your plan. It'll have a little red thing that says you haven't activated it yet. You just click redeem, put it in, and bam, you're good to go. So it's pretty simple. I haven't really looked at much. I did create a knowledge base because I wanted to see what that was. But besides that, I haven't really checked out much. So let's go ahead and scroll down and see if we see anything interesting. That doesn't look like much. It looks like it's just kind of going to walk you through how to do everything. Okay, so yeah, the getting started, you probably want to go through that. I probably should have done that before this video, but it's a little late now. So let's check out the knowledge bases. That's what I've looked at already. So you get articles here. Basically, you're setting up your projects and then your categories for that project. So I did marketing reviewed and then software reviews. And then this is at the point where it looks like you write articles from here. Not sure what the use of this is yet. I'm assuming the chat bots will use this. I don't know yet. We'll see. And then I did Wines Uncovered, which is the wine blog we run for the channel. And we did Wine History as the category. So I do actually want to create, and I don't know what this highlighting is doing either, by the way. See how it highlights it in purple as I click them? So I'm not sure what that does. It's not a very intuitive platform so far. I'll, I'll give it that. So I, I do want to write an article so we're going to check that out here in a second. So let's go to the help desk. You got your inbox, which is where you'll find all your, your issues. And you got your analytics. Okay, that's neat. This is nothing like Zendesk, by the way. Okay, so here's your available hours. I like that. You have your canned responses or saved responses is what they call them. But most platforms call them canned responses. Manage your labels. So you can label different things. Say you have one person handling technical issues. You can label as tech, stuff like that. Here's your chat bot. Enable chat bot. So you got to enter in your API key here. And we'll do that here in a second. You get your chat history and your settings. Okay, so we need to go get our API key. Now, if you don't know how to get an API key, you just head over to openai.com. Scroll all the way down. Go to API login. This is just how I do it. I'm sure there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Then you just log in with your Google. If you don't have one yet, you'll just do the sign up. I believe you can just go ahead and continue with Google either way, though, and it will just create an account for you. And then when you get in, you want to go to API. Most people do have a chat GPT account, but uh, you don't want to click this one. You want to go to API. Now, this is what you're going to see when you get here. Now, this is the playground. This is not where we need to be. We need to go up here to dashboard right here in the top right. Now, this is going to bring you to your agents and stuff like that. You want to click here where it says API key on the left. Now, I have quite a few different API keys, so you're probably not going to have any. If you do, you can go ahead and use one of those if you like, or you can create a new one. I would suggest creating a new one for every software you use. That way, you can just delete it when you get rid of that software. So we'll call this one simple base. And you can set your restrictions here if you only wanted to do certain things. You don't really need to do that, but you can. And you select your project. I don't have any projects. I just use all default. And you copy the key, head back over. 
And now we're going to enable our chatbot. We'll be right back. All right, and this is what pops up. Add articles to train your chatbot. Okay, that's weird. So I don't like that you can you can only use articles to train your chatbot. Most chatbots you can train with other things. You know what? I'm an idiot. It's up here up top. Okay, so you can train on crawl a website. Okay, we'll crawl. I don't want to do marketing. I always do that one. Let's do wines uncovered. Let's do a wine one. Okay, so we're going to take that URL, pop it in here, and we're going to go ahead and fetch links. That's it. Didn't pull out very many. Select all, train. So it looks like it pulled in all the socials and all the categories. It didn't actually pull any of the posts in. So if you're not linking out to everything from your homepage, you probably don't want to use that link. I mean, for most people, you probably should be linking out from your homepage. It does give you more link juice to go to all your other articles. So you can do PDFs. You can do just do text documents or you, you can add articles. You can create articles. You can't add articles. That's weird. Add data source. Looks like it's all the same. Train, 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 train. Okay, so it was trained on all that now. Conversation history. Okay, so here's the settings now that we have our stuff in here. You can add multiple keys, looks like. That's neat. Auto index knowledge base articles. Might as well. Hand off conversations to a human agent. Yes, please. That's great. I love that they have this already on launch. A lot of chatbots don't have this, and it's on the roadmap for most of them. I don't like that. That should be the, the number one thing you add for an AI chatbot because most people don't like talking to an AI. They want a person. So you just want the AI there to hand off basically. You choose your model here. I would suggest GPT-40 Mini. It's the smartest cheap one. 4.0 is not too expensive either so it's not a huge deal but uh, definitely 4.0 Mini for sure. It's half the price of 3.5 turbo and it's better. So it's win-win. I'm not going to mess with the temperature settings. Okay, so this is your custom prompt for your, your AI. We'll leave it default. So let's go to chatbot. This is where you customize the look of it. I like that it just absolutely just says, hey, it's our AI assistant. I like that. That way people can just go ahead and click right to send the message if they want. Not mess with it. Okay, so you got a bunch of settings here. You got translations. Interesting. So you have to manually do translations. Okay, no, 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 it's it's letting you, so if you want to say hi instead of welcome, for example. Okay, so these these are just your, your templates. I don't know why it's called translations, but it should be widget templates, basically. But this is what it's going to, like for this down here, it's going to say AI chatbot. You could just name it to Jake's bot or something like that. Or down here, instead of send us a message, it says message us. So that's what this is. So code snippet, this is how you embed it onto your site. Just copy that and embed it into wherever you want. Most people would do like the footer or something if you want it on like every page. All right, so let's go to the next spot. You got team here. Okay, you can add your team members. I believe it said it was unlimited team members. And then here's where you check your plan. We're obviously on tier one because I don't know if I'm going to like this platform or not. And that's really about it. There's no way to actually test your chat bot in here, which kind of sucks. Or maybe you can. Let's try this. Nope, can't test nothing. So this is just what it looks like. You can change your colors, put on the right or left. They're mostly on the right, so we'll keep it there. I'm not seeing anything crazy. You can hide chatbot out of working hours. That's pretty cool. Kind of pointless to have a AI chatbot if you don't want it on all the time, though. And the whole point of AI. Ooh, show special notice. Okay, so you can put, like, little deals in there. Hey, we got a bonus going on. Bonus sign-ups now. Head to link. I don't know. So that's pretty cool. Allowed domains, so that's coming soon. So you're going to be able to block certain people. So anyone that just spams your stuff, you can just block them. I like this. This is pretty cool so far. So let's go over to the articles. We'll go to Wines Uncovered, Wine History. And the reason I did this category is I actually have a software that creates outlines. So I can just do it that way. You'll see why in a second. So we're going to go to add a new article. And this is pretty basic. So what I thought originally was you have to type in here and then describe it and then it will write it for you, right? That's not how it works. So you have to go to help me write up here. Now you you have your settings here as well, so you can do your SEO and stuff like that. It's I don't know where this is getting posted, so I'm not sure why you'd have to do SEO settings. Well, I guess we'll find out here in a second, but it's almost like it's going to be the front end of your website as well. So I don't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And you could save as draft. So help me write Right now you got Article Wizard. 
This is a step-by-step -step process. Okay, and then article generator. Let's do the generator first. So this is where you just need to post in your outline, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do an English article, and we're going to come over here. Now this is a full outline for an article about ancient Mesopotamia. All right, so yeah, we'll just put that in there. And it's got the markdown, so it should know exactly what this means. But worst case scenario, we got this over here. We can give it if it doesn't understand that outline. So let's test it. Generating an article, this may take about 30 seconds, which is pretty quick. Okay, first glance, I hate it. Not good at all. It is a whopping 400 words, which is nothing. It tells nothing. So let's try labeling them. Okay, so we switched it to an H1, H2, H3 kind of titling. We want to see if it actually does that over here. Let's see how intuitive the AI is. Now, I wish they'd let us adjust the article writing prompt, the system prompt and whatnot. And looks like it did not. It completely ignored the fact that we put in H3s. And once again, it produced essentially a tiny article. If I had to guess, this is like 400 words again. Oops, I copied too much. Yeah, 450 words seems to be the way it goes. All right, so let's do the article wizard. What was the topic again? The role of wine in ancient Mesopotamian society. Let's see how it works with this. So we got the title. Those are friggin' awful titles. This is the keyword that can't really be, that can't really be the title. That's horrible. Okay, well, I guess generate the description. Actually, no, let's back up. Let's Let's make the topic the title because that's way better. Okay, so the description, it generates essentially a thesis. Okay, I like this one. Let's generate sections now. I like this one here. Okay, so let's write the article. I have a feeling this is going to be another 450 word article, which is crap. You can't write an article like this in 450 words. Not if it's going to be actually teaching something. Okay, this is actually better than the last ones. So it looks like this version is definitely the way to go if you're going to do this. Yeah, 982 words. This is much better. The formatting's okay. Yeah, this is, a, this is a fairly solid article. Not amazing. Definitely not Koala level, but it's not bad. So use this article. And then looks like it just pops it right in there. I don't know what this undefined thing is, though. So we can add text, headers, image. We can embed stuff, HTML markup. We can do a table, checklist, quote, code, attachment, delimiter. Okay, so we'll just delete that for now. On the writer, the things I can see being an issue is, well, one, this right here. <laughs> I don't know why that was even there. So it's not great at importing the article into the system. It's ugly. The formatting is bare. It, it's not good. There is no, no bullet points, no lists, no tables, no nothing. I feel like some of that should be in there somewhere. It doesn't generate any images pretty much whatsoever from what I can tell. So let's go ahead and save and publish, see what happens. The article writing itself is all right. And it looks like it does generate the SEO metadata for you, which is kind of cool. I don't know. You can upload images. You can add your related articles, which we don't have any yet. So far, it's just okay. But where does it... Where does it post this is what I want to know. So not impressed with that. That wasn't good. So you got your analytics here. It can see that I looked at the, yeah, I looked at the article. It's weird that, so where do you set up the domain? That's what I want to know. So this is the public site, right? So this is, this is your knowledge base for your software, essentially, if I understand that correctly. Okay, so that's kind of cool, I guess. So this is really for help docs. I misunderstood this software. I'm going to be honest with you, I, mis I misunderstood this software. It's not an article writer. This is this is definitely for help docs, and that's exactly what this looks like too. So this is pretty cool. Definitely not what I expected. So I'll be refunding it personally. This is not something I need. So if you're needing a, a th something that can produce help docs and, and get you through everything, it does make sense that that's what this is. But it's just, I thought it was more of a full service type of software. Not necessarily just the help docs, the help center. And then the ticketing department. So essentially, you have your help center. You write your articles for that, for every situation, every problem. And then it'll just show up here. Here's the categories. So on. So in comparison, this is Koala's support 
system essentially. So that's what, kind of what this will be. It does need to have some kind of C name input here, which I I didn't see. So we'll look for that in a second. If you want to see them side by side, yeah, that's basically what this is. And then I wonder if there's a way to do a go to website button up there because that kind of makes sense to have. You know, just click that and it'll take you right to the website. So this is definitely a supporting software for your website. I'm glad we figured that out because uh, I was like, what in the world is this? Okay, so here's how you connect your domain. So we missed this completely under the knowledge base settings. So this is where you put your like help dot your domain. In this scenario, it would be help dot winesuncovered.com instead of this here. So you got your custom code here. You can make it look however you want, basically. Okay, here's your navigation. So when you go over here, you can add a nav bar up top. So this is where you would add a call to action. So go to site or what did they do? Yeah, go to website. So we'll just do that and then paste then paste the website in there and it should pop up. So let's save and refresh. Okay. Yeah, and it takes us right there. Okay, that's cool. I like this. And then you can add your footer stuff here, which is pretty cool. I like that it's just point and click. And then the middle is basically the help content. That's your categories and stuff like that. Man, I was totally doing this all wrong. And you can change the template style over here. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it makes it look a little different. Now you got the nav bar over here. I actually like the other one better. I feel like it's it's more it's more niche, <laughs> I guess, is what I'm thinking of here. I like it. Now, I don't feel like this stuff is too hard to build yourself. This can't be that hard to code, I mean, honestly. I don't know, but it does seem pretty popular in industry to have a standard kind of help desk. I've I've never run a software before, so you know, it, this could just be something that's just easy to have. So you can add your logos here. You got your logo preview. Let's add in a Wines Uncovered. We'll add in our logo. Hit save. Let's see what that did. Boom. Now we got our Wines Uncovered logo. I wish we could make it bigger, though. And it looks like it adds it down at the bottom, too. Yeah, okay. That's clean. I like that. Do a favicon. And we'll do the same thing for the favicon. And that's going to change this up here. Yep. There we go. That looks ugly, but hey. Okay, and then a footer. You can specifically change the footer logo to something else if you want as well. So you get your header or header color background. You can also choose an image. Then your text color for the background. Okay. Then you could put your social medias in. It looks like it might just be an image. So I'm not really sure exactly what that does. Why? Well, I, I don't know why you'd have a help desk that is set to private, but they do have that option there. So you got your general name link to your home page. So that's pretty cool. You can put in a tracking code for Google. It sounds like a nightmare. Allow branding. You definitely want to turn that off and then save changes. All right. So I think we got a good hold down of what this is. You know, future reference, I probably should go through the uh, getting started guide before doing the review. But hey, at least you know it's real, you know. <laughs> so I would not use the AI writer for this. I, I think it's crap for one. And two, if you're going to have a help desk, let's actually make it helpful. That's all I'm saying. It's not that hard to write articles for help docs. It is annoying, but it's not hard. I don't see why you'd need analytics for this type of thing. That doesn't seem super important to me. I, I guess it's kind of a nice to know. Not really that big of a deal, though. Yeah, and I think we've checked everything out. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is really easy to use. I think everything but the AI writer is fantastic. The AI writer shit, but we also didn't give it a ton of information, to be fair. It doesn't have a lo whole lot of control. I think you'd be better off creating your help docs in a chat version kind of thing. Kind of like a, uh, not necessarily OpenAI's chat GPT, but I would, I would actually suggest a software like uh, Magi. And, and software like this, you can actually go in and create custom personas. And I'll show that to you here. Yeah, and I'll go in and show you that. And as you can see, we're already on the Wines Uncovered project. Just go into a chat, new chat right there. Oh, and apparently they're being used so much they have excessive load. Hey, get more servers, guys. Come on, man. What are you doing, Dustin? I'm showing your product off and it's crapping to bed over here. For the record, it's running just fine. That was just annoying. The great thing about Magi here is you can choose all kinds of different different AIs to use. You can test all the different stuff. You want to test out the new Llama 400B. You can do that in Magi. 
so it's pretty cool. Now, the other thing you have is you have these custom AI agents, essentially. to where you customize exactly what you want to say, how you want to act. Now, I basically created a persona that is me, but just like one that knows wine and focuses on wine, makes a bunch of wine jokes in its writing, stuff like that. If you want an example of the writing style of this persona, I actually did the uh, privacy policy with this one. That persona did this. Definitely writes way better than me, and it's kind of funny. That's what that's what a software like Magi gets you, and you can create as many of these personas as you want. Now, I know this isn't a Magi review. I just wanted to throw that out there. For help desk stuff, definitely want something different than a just flat AI generation article. Okay, you need more you need more micro control over it because you're going to know your software way better than some AI. Anyways, if you have a software and you need another help desk software to maximize the potential, make it easier to make the help desk and give you an AI chat to boost, I would say Simple Base is a good pickup. Its average rating is four out of five tacos, and I think that's a pretty fair rating, honestly. That's probably what I would rate it as well. Maybe four, four to four to four point five tacos. It's not too shabby at all. It does exactly what you want it to do. I did get to check out the ticket system because I'm not putting it on a live site, but I can imagine it works pretty well. If I had to guess, the AI chatbot's just as okay as all the all the rest of them. It did look pretty solid. It had some stuff that a lot of the other AI chatbots don't normally have, especially starting out on AppSumo. It does have knowledge bases. It doesn't seem like there's a limit to the knowledge base either, so your AI chatbot's going to be able to know everything, all your articles, all your documents, everything. It's going to be very helpful assuming it passes all the information correctly. I don't know for sure, but it did look pretty solid to me. It's very easy to use. Even I figured it out, and I'm pretty dumb. It does have custom CSS and JavaScript, so if you want to design it to your own liking, kind of differentiate yourself from others. Plan 1 will give you one workspace, which is exactly what I was working in. That was Plan 1. I didn't see a whole lot of limitations, so it's going to give you basically one help center domain. If you need more than one, you got three over here for 138. If you're a software phenom and have over five, you can always upgrade further over here. So what it comes with is unlimited articles, which great. Unlimited categories, awesome. So the help desk can be pretty extensive if you need it to. Unlimited languages. I didn't see a good way to translate languages, so I don't know about that yet. Unlimited author seats. This is just your employees, your team seats, unlimited file storage, which is awesome. Collect article feedback. That's a new one, or I didn't see that one in there either. And I didn't see a way to instantly translate. So let's see if we can find that. So let's go to articles. We had this one. It's a BS article. But is there a way? Okay, so translations. Yes, you can instantly translate. Let's go to Bulgarian. It should be filling out all of this, honestly. I don't know any of that. Language is not public yet, okay? So you can set that language as default. So we put it in there. Where do they view it? I don't know. Not very intuitive, but okay. Like I said, I'm dumb. <laughs> Let's do simplified Chinese, see what that does. Translation required. Okay, and you can translate entire categories, looks like. Oh, you have to actually do it. That's stupid, okay. So it doesn't have translation as far as I'm concerned. All right. Marked featured articles, cool. I create articles using AI. And I'm assuming the marked featured articles are something like this up here. I don't know for sure, though. Integrate with Intercom. The article editor, editor is just okay. I don't think it's all that great, to be honest with you. I've, I've used quite a few of them. Not impressed with that one. It's okay, though. It does everything you need. Definitely not everything you want. SEO optimized content. I disagree with that. That was garbage. The AI generation is terrible. But it didn't seem like there's a limit for it either, though. But it's also using your own open AI key, so why would they limit it? It says quite buggy, save feature not working. I didn't have any issues with saving anything. Promising, but no progress. Okay, so they don't update very often, so keep that in mind. Support is poor. I mean, which is sad, considering it's a support app, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Clean interface, but knowledge base still feels broken. I brought simple base prime, or bot set Simple base primarily for the knowledge base tool. Plan to, okay. It doesn't actually say what's broken about it. The main problem is writing the articles. The interface feels glitchy. It's because it doesn't, you use an AI to write articles for a help desk for a software it doesn't know. 
So that's the problem. It doesn't allow you to enter enough information for the AI writer to really work. So if it did work for that, it would be actually pretty impressive. I just don't see how it would be able to do that. I'm pretty sure there was bullet functionality in there. I may have missed it. Okay, so you got the plus over here. You got your list. Let's add that. Okay, so there's no way to adjust it into bullet points. Interesting, he's right. Son of a gun. Yeah, you gotta do lists instead of... Uh, there's no way to adjust the style of the list. A bullet point is still a list, so technically they do still have that. He's right, it is only numeric, which is annoying. Okay, lack of uh, basic email verification. Yeah, there's no... And it looks like they do limit the email support as well. Okay, so there are some issues with this. This isn't perfect. For me, it's definitely going to be a refund because I don't need this. I don't have a software to set up a help desk with. But if you do have a software and you don't have a help desk like Koala over here, that's fantastic. If you don't have one fully flushed out like Koala over here, you can make something similar. Not as good, but something similar with SimpleBase. And it comes with the AI chatbot which is always nice. It's a nice little bonus on top of everything. A little sprinkle on top of the uh, cupcake, as they say. I hope this helps. Uh, if you're interested in it, I will leave the links down below. Go check that out. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Later.